LeBron James and the Los Angeles Lakers have officially agreed on a new two-year, $104 million max deal that will keep LeBron in LA for at least another season because there is a player option once again on the second year of a LeBron deal. LeBron's going to become just the second player in the NBA to have a no-trade clause joining Bradley Bill. Because LeBron ended up taking the max, the Lakers now have minimum room to add other options to the squad as they now pretty much go above and beyond that second tax apron. And I'm sure you've heard a lot about LeBron and the Lakers are locking in for at least one more year as LeBron turns 40 in December. So I don't want to sound like a hypocrite. If you watch my video yesterday, number one, I'm appreciative of your love and support. Never forget that and your time. Number two, if you if you watch the video, I said LeBron should not take a pay cut. I want to separate two things, right? When I speak about what LeBron should do for the NBA versus what I think LeBron should do with the Lakers, those are two totally different things. When I speak about the NBA, usually I'm speaking about the common viewer, the TV viewer that's watching the product night in, night out of the NBA season. When I speak about Laker fans, I'm talking about the customers that are actually going out and spending their hard-earned money night in, night out of the NBA season. NBA tickets are not cheap. If you try to take your wife and your kids out, I mean, we're talking about $1,200, $1,300, and that's in, like, the cheapest of markets. So those are two totally different things because I said LeBron should not be taking pay cuts because it looks wrong that the, the, the biggest player in the sport in the last 20 years will be making less money than Emmanuel quickly next year to help the biggest franchise in the NBA keep their best player. That's what I said. As the Lakers, though, again, removing the NBA overarching business element in this, the Lakers, though, I feel like are just playing into LeBron's hands too much. The Lakers shouldn't feel like they have to be the team that's held hostage by LeBron. LeBron ain't win us two, three, four championships. He got us one. Unfortunately, it happened in the bubble. So the fan base wasn't able to really bond with LeBron in his best season as a Los Angeles Laker. That's unfortunate and not LeBron's fault. But that's the reality of what happened because of a global pandemic. LeBron and Rich Paul are holding the Lakers hostage. The Lakers are a poorly ran franchise that pretty much have nothing else going for them outside of being able to get LeBron, who, let's be real, he came to California to get his other businesses off the ground. LeBron not only has been able to get the players that he wants to play with, Rich has been able to get the players that he wants to be in Los Angeles. Now LeBron's got the coach that he did a podcast with. Hell, it's to the point where LeBron was able to get his son on the Lakers. A lot of us believe, if not for Bronny James being LeBron's son, he wouldn't be in the league, let alone getting a guaranteed deal. That's the reality of where Le the Lakers are and where LeBron's at right now. The fact that LeBron is getting more in his latest deal is shocking to me. The Lakers got eliminated in the first round. They won one playoff game. But now LeBron not only gets another max deal, even though he's not held to the standard of a max player, LeBron now gets a no-trade clause, joining only Bradley Bill to have that in the NBA right now. I don't understand why the Lakers are giving more to LeBron's contract when I feel like the Lakers are giving more to what LeBron wants overall. The coach, the son, the agent. I don't get that. That makes no sense to me. If you remember correctly, LeBron wasn't the happiest while he was a Miami Heat between 2010 and 2014. LeBron wanted things in Miami that Pat Riley and company were unwilling to give him including tickets reportedly for more of his friends, including certain demands that LeBron wanted from a team perspective. LeBron ultimately ended up leaving Miami in favor of going back to the Cleveland Cavaliers. I believe in my heart of hearts, LeBron thought when he came to Los Angeles, the Dundada franchise in the NBA, I believe LeBron thought it was going to be run like Miami. I believe he thought, you know, he wasn't going to get his way. But the reality is not only... Are the Lakers not run as well as the Miami Heat? The Lakers are not run as well and as strict as the Cleveland Cavaliers. I believe LeBron was open to however 
the Lakers were going to run this franchise. They have shown LeBron no backbone, so LeBron and Rich Paul have pretty much ran over the Lakers. That is what's happened. This is an incompetent franchise, and LeBron and Rich Paul have taken advantage of it, and they're getting whatever they want. And now the Lakers are being held hostage by LeBron James and whatever he wants. That's what happened. Why in the hell does LeBron get a no-trade clause added to this deal? Why? The Lakers should be thinking about life after LeBron. They should be thinking about trades for LeBron and Anthony Davis. They're doing two things, which you can never do in the NBA if you're trying to win a championship. They're holding on to picks with older veteran star players. LeBron's about to be 40. Anthony Davis is probably 30 going on 40. You can't do that and then in the same token, hold on to your picks. Tell me you're going for a championship, but be a bad team. It can't be both. You probably should start this thing over from the jump and build around an Austin Reeves or Rui Hachimura. But again, the Lakers are trying to play right in the middle. They're holding on to picks. They're invested to stars, but they're not going too deep into the luxury tax. The Lakers are a mess right now. They're a playing team. And they didn't get better at all this offseason. And LeBron getting that max deal after reportedly being interested in maybe taking less for Klay Thompson, which I don't even understand that. I still don't get that one. Klay Thompson has been watched for quite some time now. It tells me all I need to know. It's a bad offseason for the Los Angeles Lakers. They pretty much are running it back. And what did running back mean last year for the Lakers? They got to the playoffs and won one game. You could argue that the Lakers, if they avoid the Denver Nuggets, got a crack at this thing. I'd argue that as well. But the Denver Nuggets are still going to be one of the top two, three teams in the Western Conference. And if the Lakers make the playoffs... They're still going to be one of the seventh, eighth seed to make the playoffs. So you're probably going to end up playing Denver again, which means you're going to lose again. Time, love, and support. It's what your boy never take for granted. I'm out. I have a wild goal for the month of July. I want to post 300 Facebook videos and 300 YouTube videos. I want to work so hard this month that 10,000 people will follow me on my new Instagram account, as told by Pharaoh. I'm thanking you in advance because I know y'all going to support your boy.